what you did, and then the last three years you got the white man's job. Thank you, sir. Good night. Uh, now. Now. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, uh, those picket all along there, they had to fix those shells. You had to put, uh, and grease it, and oil it, and fix shells. And, uh, the last three years there, uh, that's, well, you, you could call it oiling and greasing, but them shells had to be fixed, too, when they put a fur in it, something like the whole that thread, when it's packed in there, where they feed it off, like when they're weaving it, it, it mm -hmm. had to be where it would hold in, but it wouldn't run off like it's coming mm -hmm. like, something like a, you, you put some little holes in there and put something like hair in there, and that hold that thread and make it, Tension on it while it's pulling out, going through that shell to go through it. Make that claw. If you don't, it'd be too much like it'll make a bad place in the claw. And then the next thing, them, you got to you got to grease them now. That's the job getting all up on them things. And uh, I liked it though. It's better. It wasn't so heavy as it, what it was. So I made me a little toolbox. I, I was the first colored they ever had a toolbox sitting up on the table like the white. They had fixes. They had toolbox wrenches. And I would real soon, I would just every wrench, I would buy me the wrenches and put them in there and didn't know how I know what to do with them. But I had a toolbox and a lock on it. They locked that. And then that I was I was I was telling my wife, well, God, I'm gonna fix it. And I was. I don't know how good, but I got three dollars and thirty five cents an hour. That's something I hadn't done in about twenty years. <laughs> but I I uh, I done some uh, anything in the car. Now, I took out waste sometime when I wasn't doing nothing. Piled the cattle was at the waste house, but that wasn't my job. I tell you, if one is out there, you, they, you they do his one man to do two or three jobs. If, if there was no such a thing as your job, you done anything they tell you to do if you could do it, but you didn't get to pay. But. You you done it if your boss man tell you to do that. You could just go on and do it if he said it, although you know it wasn't your job. But you got to do what he said. Don't you go home? They see you send you home. So, what happened the, the last three years? You mean in, in, on the job? Well, when I go in that morning late, although I was making coffee for the boss man when I got this promotion in, in the office, I go in there. And the first thing I done in the morning when I went in there, instead of going on. I went and uh, and, and got a, it had a great big call for it there. It's kept in the office. But my first thing I, they told me to do was go in and get the coffee ready. The great big, it last all day, great big thing of coffee there. I was glad to go in, because I, I like coffee too, you know. So I, in fact, I was the person to test it. There wasn't nobody in there. I'd make it. I pulled me out a cup of first and put all the sugar in it that I wanted to. And, but now uh, that, they sat right there all day, and everybody, the bosses come in, they drank them some coffee. Look at me like that. I didn't know. I said, I know how it tastes, because I, I made it. <laughs> then the next thing that I done from them, I had to do it. That's it. I had to go to the men's restroom and sort of clean it up, too, you know. Yeah. Clean it up. But that, that wasn't my job, but that's what they say you do. And then by the time they go out there and start greasing on my loom, get some shells going. Caraways, I have carried. I done some of everything that like that down there. And the next thing I done was the ladies, the white ladies run Beamers. And one of them was the boss man's wife running Beamers. And um, she would, you had to pull that yard off of them thing with the hand, with the on the, on the quiller when they run it down. And once you want to pull a bounce up and bore it up in Beamer balls. But she would get me to come in there. She would pay me for doing this. And I could quit my job very easy out there. And she told me because he's the boss man and he wasn't going to tell me not to go out there and pull it off for Mary Alice. That's her name. So when I go out there and pull that off, she'd give me about three creels a day, something. She'd give me a dollar and a half a creel, pull it off and boil it up. And so, gosh, I'm, 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 I'm got money to go to the dope house with all day. So, so I'm glad to do that. I just, when she said, uh, when they said, pull this off for me, I just lay my wrenching thing down and going out there and do it. It wasn't going to be nothing to say because he's the boss man, you know. And uh, I got my little money enough to pay for it. Don't quit, you no. Know. I like to do it. I like that little chain. And it wasn't no hard job. They had a machine. 
to get it together, put it on them beamers, and put it on a big wheel. Turn the switch on here, roll over and pull, pull that on. Then when you roll a great big spool full of it all, now you you take it and get a good sharp knife and cut it off in mop yarn, they call it. Long pieces, put in a box. Lay it in a great big shoe box till you got it packed for it. strap it up and carry it to the wish house. I was about busy, all right, but that was, that was my job, too, but uh, they said do it. And what did they pay you for all that? They didn't pay me for nothing but the lady that owned that pulling off of that. Of course, there's other, that was on my job, because the, the ladies, two of them, Miss Kraft and Miss Huff, they were running the beam ones, but they, there's too heavy for them to pull off, and, and I was glad to get to pull it off. And, the boss man wasn't going to say nothing because one of his wife, he, she's the one to tell me, so I just quit what I'm doing and go out out there. He, he, he asked where I was, nobody wasn't going to tell him nothing because he wasn't going to tell him that I was out there doing that out there. Now, the last three years, you said you got a job that the white man had had before. Could you tell me about that? Say that again. Now, you said that... Uh, the last three years, yeah. you worked at a job that a white man had had before, and you got had paid. all the time. All white always had run that job. Wasn't no colored fixes. Wasn't no colored oilers. But we had a fellow, Mr. Hunt, came here from there somewhere. He was the manager, young manager there, and he, they wouldn't let us drink water out there. Well, we drink water there. We uh, they had a water cooler. We went there. We'd have to get a bottle of a Coca-Cola bottle and go to them water coolers and catch you some water in the bottle and drink it out the bottle, not stand up there. And you couldn't drink, turn it on on these coolers and took, bend over and drink water like the white. You drank it out of a bottle. You couldn't even drink it out of there. And uh, Mr. Hunt come here. No, they find it before Mr. Hart come, they stop from drinking out of the bottle and they was kicking on that. And then they set us up a little something on the side of that, that water cooler. Looked like the little uh, appliance that they use in bathrooms. Well, they set that over there. We could drink out of that little bowl bottle like that. You could drink out of that. Well, when Mr. Hart come, he, he took and told them all out. Took, make them tore all them things out and all of us could drink out the same cooler. Cooler, out the cooler there. So, that was, we first started doing that, they didn't like it. You'd be drinking water, they would come up and they just didn't like you to drink water there. And we did, that's the way we would drink it out. It gets you something in the bottle and walk off and drink it. But don't, don't bend over there drinking out of that. And uh, that's the way, or the whole, through the whole meal like that. When did that change? Let me, let me adjust something, George. I need... When did that change? Well, it's, it's, it, it, it's been changed. It, 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 it changed right after World War II. And why? And why? Mm -hmm. Well, the government or something that wouldn't allow it to, to happen. I didn't report it. And they had to do it. They had to do it. So I was told. So I drinking water out the same water cooler. And they had to come up to a minimum wage. And that told us to begin to get a little money for what we were doing. At that time, there was no such a thing as a minimum wage. They just paid you what they wanted to do. Now, why? I think the federal government had something to do with that. I'm sure it was. Hadn't it still been the same way? <coughs> now, you said, told us yesterday that uh, you was working as a something like a loom fixer and all of that. Right. And then the last three years, you got that job and you got paid for that job. You could got you tell paid. Us, yeah. Could start telling as though I'd never heard that story before. You never heard that before. Did you just tell as though I never heard you tell it before? Well, they put in some new looms there. That the company then didn't have picking all loom, but they had them. Callaway had them in Lagrange. They finally bought some picking all loom. That's it. The brand new loom. They ain't many weavers know how to, how to weave on it. But 
There's a colored guy came here from LaGrange. He's the only one that knows anything. He was way to Callaway and LaGrange, and he's the only one that knows anything about them not picking on them. They, they didn't know a thing about it. And uh, then this this old gentleman retired, and they had been several retired, and I was it, it got better job, but. Mr. Hart come down, he told me, William, I see your history, you, you, you was a Nixon, he was the manager of, uh, he told the second hand to tell me this. You was, you was the elder before I said, I appreciate it. He said, well, I'm gonna give it to you. So he gave me this job, uh, greasing brand new, brand new looms. And he wanted to make sure they had grass, and then you had to fix the shell means where you put the, the, the thread in there, and it goes back and forth through that loom. And sometimes you have to keep them up and fix them little hairs and now what to keep a tension mm -hmm. on that thread, not to rattle off too fast. And you got to grease them and make sure that you grease them, don't they? Sometimes they catch a fly, you got to try to put them out if you got to put out. That's the stuff that, well, you'll put them out if you put it in there, but it push your eyes out too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's burn your eyes, you know. Mm -hmm. Dust, uh, you yeah. know. Now, again, what did you do the last three years that you were in the factory? Fixed oil, picking oil loans. And Just say the, the last three years I was in the Last three years. That's Just what, that's to start what, off with, the last three years I did all that. The last three years, that's what I, I made uh, more money the last three years than I made the whole amount of the time I worked there. Uh, $3.35 an hour. Okay. Now we want to switch over to tell us about building your 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 houses. The houses. Yeah. Oh well, I bought. I went in service in '42. We had a little shotgun house right there, three rooms of that house. My mother was living there. I was staying with Mama, and I had a sister. She and old old man was plotted. and she moved with us. That's why I went in service. But during the three rooms, she had some furniture, and I had Doctor Burton to build another room over here on the tooth where she'd have room. And I put the money back in paper when I went in service. When I come out of service then, she was still living. I built that, that room off this way to make more room. Now that was in 47. I come out in 45. And I married in 47 and built this house here. I built this little house for rent. I was just, I said I go build a rent house. There's a lump of sheep then. Then why married and started living in little things. Try we build another room over this way and the next year we run one over yard the way. And, and we still ain't got no what our intention. We would well, we got started living here and we died and couldn't do it then, you know. And that's all a long story, but it's true. Now, did you ever live in a, a mill house? A what? A mill house. Mill house? What do you mean like that? By the mill? Do you ever live in a house that was owned by the mills? No, no. Why? Well, the, the mill houses was all white in that village. Well, the company finally sold them houses there. They, 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 they kept all them houses. You ever been through that village? Well, they kept them. company kept them until they rotted down, and then they, they was they sold them at a nice price, and the mill couldn't come, they couldn't do nothing but wait and pay for them. Because if you, they sold them at a nice price. The mill company used to own every house over there. Hmm. All the coal, they furnished the coal, the wood, the houses, and blow the whistles every morning for light. They stopped that. Four o'clock, they blow it, hmm. blow it by the hour, and wake up everybody. Well, they stopped that everywhere in there. And then they decided that, well, we sell them houses now. They got to be repaired. Tell me, I need them up anyhow. And they sold them at a nice price. And they had to buy them. They didn't have no choice. Mm -hmm. Well, then they built some new houses. Or they sold them too. Well, Color didn't live in them. If you want to know, Color didn't live in them houses. There's a few little houses around up there. Didn't many people in Hogan own their own little houses there. Oh, reason I didn't, because I usually was staying out in the rural there. Walk from the town, sometimes walk up the highway about a mile. But when I come out of services, 
Yeah, most of them built a little house for the children, you know. Now, do, do you remember, well, you were just a child. Yeah, back in 1934, there was a great big strike here. Do you remember anything about it? No, I heard about it. <laughs> Tell us about it. I don't know much about when that said it was a strike. Well, we ha they had it around here, the, 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 but if they you if you if they found out that you was trying to trying to strike, they would fire you. You know, that's the way you couldn't if you. you, you, you uh, I wasn't working in the mill in thirty four. Thirty nine when I went to work down there, but I heard about it, but I wasn't working down there. Uh, they done what they wanted to come. They done the things they want to do, and they had men. You had to do what he said do if you want to work there. I'm not the, the management of that. The Dave Reed, he was just, he stayed there a long time. He did. And then Callaway used to own that mill. Callaway and Plummer Grange used to own it. The United States Rubber Company bought it. And then, then later on, Goodrich come there and bought a stock with them, and that's a, and what I had done come out from down there then. So they, what I was saying, they, they moved out stuff, most of it over to Thompson. They got some, the mill over there about three times bigger, you know, And they going out, in this down, I think the plant is just about, just about closed down there. So that I can yell it. And now I want to go back to something that we were talking about before. Uh, you said that the, that the, the blacks, didn't work in spinning, they didn't work in doffing, they didn't work in, in weaving and that kind of thing. No, sir. And I said, why? And you said, well, they didn't know how to. And yet when I asked you later on, you said, well, they do now. Do you think that it was just because people didn't know how or they wouldn't let them try? Oh, they wouldn't let them try. They didn't know how they couldn't have done it. They'd start off and just tell them the whole thing. Yeah. Just as though I didn't ask you that question, well, so you don't tell your grandchild about it. <coughs> you know how it was. You just wanted me to want to say it with it. That's right, yeah. yeah. You well, just they couldn't do it. They didn't know how to do it. Well, we'd never been to school enough to get another education to know how to do it. But a lot of those people who were doing that didn't have an education. White people didn't have an education either. They let them go on and do the best they could by it until they could learn them. But you wouldn't have. You, couldn't, you didn't know. You just didn't know. How much education did you have? Third grade. I lost my daddy when I was seven. How was the youngest? <laughs> and I couldn't go to school. It bought almost like this because all this time I go to school when it was wet, couldn't fly. We lived on a what, Mr. Askew wedge farm out here, about ten miles. And I was seven years. I went to flying when I was nine. And if it were wet, I'd go to school a little bit, barely learn how to write my name. <laughs> I had to fly, and I never could go to school back then uh, because I had to fly and raise them young ones. And daddy got killed when I was seven years old. I never knew the use of a father, but I knew my daddy. But then I come to be a little man. I got a big enough to fly a mule by 10. I was farming for myself, me and my mama then, you know. My mama used to fly. <laughs> she didn't go, and I hope she's in heaven because she, we come up the rough side of the mountain. But we're still alive. That's what mm -hmm. counts, you know. I am. She's good. Well, when did you get your education? When I get it, I ain't never got it. I ain't never been to school. I didn't go. I couldn't go to school when I came out of seven for the working on the second shift, and it couldn't go to school was at night. You know, that you could go to school, Sam would pay you to go to school to get a little more education, but I never could go because I couldn't swap shift with nobody. Mm -hmm. So I was on second shift and couldn't swap with nobody, so I didn't change it. Getting all of that, it has some little money, they call it a 5220. I never put my name on the thing since I come out of service, since I come out. Six signs, something else. For money or something else. But Don't you know speak. how to read and write and figure and all of that. I, I can figure a little bit and read and write my name. You believe that? That's true. How'd you learn? You can write your name and add a little bit, but you ain't gonna do no hard lot of multiplying and stuff, stuff like that. And 
thing like that. You can't go up there. You can little every day stuff, but I guess it's all right to not do it. I would come this for maybe I didn't didn't need it. I'm still alive. I don't, you know, folks now that know too much sometimes. <laughs> oh my lord, I'm preaching that. <laughs> sometimes you just, you've seen people know it all, and they can read and write. They just ain't got no mother with. It. I don't ask what mother with is, but they claim that's a great help. What you think about it? That's common sense. Yeah. Okay. That's Hold great. It. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Could list for me all the jobs that a black man or woman couldn't do in the mill, and then list all the jobs that they could do. Weren't allowed to do. Weren't allowed to do. I know they could do it. Weren't allowed to do. Weren't given an opportunity to do. Am tell, I being tell clear? Tell me why. Tell you why. Yeah, I'm asking you, could you list like a laundry list, all the jobs that the black man and woman weren't, and okay. then tell me all the jobs that they did do, okay? Like a list. Take it into posture. Okay. Could you tell me, could you tell me all the jobs that a black man or woman weren't, weren't given the opportunity to do inside the mill? Oh yeah, like, oh, okay. Okay, and repeat. All except, all except sweeping and, and mopping. Mopping the floor, the back, the bounce of them, all, 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 all except that. Like weaving, uh, spinning, or uh, in the spinning room, or the, or the weave shop, or the, or the, or the, or the uh, uh, machine shop, warehouse. I respect that duck. They, they, they all was white men. All the things that they job was to sweep and mop the floor and pick that waste. That, that, that's back then, but before I left them down there, 15 years ago, they were doing about anything in there that, that, that the white did. Like weaving, and running quillers, and beamers, and upstairs in the card room. It's hot up there, but they, that pays good. But they was, they was doing all of that then, but I was just speaking well. When I was there, when I when I come out now, there wasn't no color doing much of nothing. The warehouse work a lot of color. That uh, truck and that big cotton, there's a lot of color. Men worked in. Most of the men, there maybe one or two in the office or in the warehouse, but that was a, the most of the men, but most of them was colored. Truck that cotton and the boxes and stuff that the ship in there, they had to be good, strong men. Uh, but they just got paid a, a, a salary by, you know, what they paid there, maybe, whatever they were paying there. They paid but I was. But that's about all that the colored folks did down there all them years with that they down there. They used to be done. There were very few colored people worked in the mill. Where back then. Why? Why were there so few colored people working in the mill back then? I guess they just figured they could get it done without using colored people. But like but baseball, you know, there used to be very few colored people playing in Major League Baseball, you know. But they, they, I don't know, but why? Just let me ask you, say why? Listen, I'm not trying to be smart, but no, don't tell me. I think I know. That's great. That's great. Couldn't be better. You know, looking for them, finding them, and most of these white cotton mill workers have told us that they were looked down upon and they were called lint heads. It was called what? Lint heads. Lint heads. Lunar heads. Lint heads. That mean you ain't got no sense. That mean no school. I don't mean sense. Lint head. Well, I told you I was a lint head. I never did get no how in the third grade. I was, I was some kind of head, wasn't it? But she said, well, how did you do that? You said you fixed it while I didn't go to school, huh? There wasn't too much. I see that done so much. 
And that mother wit that I said, that helped me along a little. And you, what did you say mother wit was you read? Did you get finished? What did you say it was? What is that? Mother wit. I think to some now that kind of gave you common sense, don't it? Don't it lead you? The mother wit, uh, it, well, you say, well, a, a man, a crazy man, if he don't have mother wit, he know how to go to bed and put his clothes on. What, he just don't. I, I never learned what mother wit was. But it's a mighty fine thing, I think, but that's all I got to rest on is mother wit. And the Lord, he's got, uh, he's a father got some wit I know. I don't know about mama, but I know he is a man that can show you the way. And he'll show you the way if you ask him. He certainly will. He will make a way out of no way. And sometimes you got to call on him. he never leave you alone. Now I went to preach you, ain't I? <laughs> what else? The truth is the light. When you tell the truth, you always preach it, though. If you tell the truth. Anytime you tell the truth, you preach it. But there's a lot of preachers that don't tell the truth, everything they say. But the Lord know what he's doing, and he'll, he, will, he will show you the way. He will not let you go too far wrong if you ask it. To lead you? Miss, I'm wondering if. Did I? Mr. R.J. Terrell. Oh, yes. I've been knowing Brother Terrell a long time. Now, did you know him when he was working in the mill? Oh, yes. And he drove truck. He was a truck driver. Yes, I've been knowing him. He, he waited down there a long time. He lost his wife not long ago. Now, he said that he was listed as a, as a, I think as a yard man. Yeah, he was yard but man. He never, but he was really a trucker. And maybe he never got paid as he should have been. Yeah, that's right. That's can you can you tell us about that? Well, he he, he guess he got truck driver. They had this, uh, a a skill for truck driver. Might have paid a little more than the other driver the truck, but he done a lot of work. That's a that's a terrible job driving a truck, and he unloaded it and loaded it and drove it. And them heavy boxes, they didn't have a track to roll them off, and he just sat there and drive. He was certainly working, but they had used some push. Hauling from one mill to another, across the road of the mill on Unaroy, and then across the old mill was tore down where I worked at till they tore it down. There used to be an old mill there. They tore it down and moved it across over there in the weaving department and built it on to the new mill. And they had the, that heavy machinery they hauled it, and he unloaded it and loaded it and go right back and get another. But he was paying, they were paying him a little more than was sweeper, but wasn't no, no, a whole lot more. And then they take out that, let's take it out, take it out your check, and, Oh, you didn't bring home much. But as I say, you could take that, we would bring it home then and buy a little food because uh, food wasn't as high as it is now. You could buy, you get there were four days to pay off. You didn't pay it this week, you paid it next. That's the reason I miss retired. To get a little shake with first of the month, but Social Security, but you got to wind how you spend it. You spend it too fast if you want to that month. <laughs> You got to look before you leave. <laughs> no, she was, well, where you gonna get paid every, every five, six days? Oh, if I don't pay it, I can pay it the next pay day. I miss that. I miss that. But the money come in like that at night, but you got to, every 30 day, you know, starve to death by that time. You. When you were working there. Oh, okay. 